Hello everyone, Stucker you here, and welcome back to a Hearts of Iron 4 video. As I said last time, I definitely read your comments. And I saw one from Dominicus that said, Hey Stakuyi, will you ever play as Lithuania and try to remake the Grand Duchy of Lithuania? It's a pretty hard and fun challenge. Well, yes. Yes, I will. Lithuania, one of the beacons of stability of the Baltics, because that's, that's definitely how that works there. And also apparently furries. But before we begin, what about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends? Yes, everyone, we're back, and Raid is bigger and better than ever. And while there really is so much to love, if anyone knows me, they know that I love to play support. So this right here is my list of top three support champions in Raid to play. First off, we got Arbiter, strong all around, but this character is really great at reviving your dead allies. Next, we have Battle Kazar, who can remove the debuffs from your team, buff your own team's damage, and also heal your allies. And finally, Raglan, which is honestly just a little speed demon, as they can make your character's turns even faster and heal up your team so that they can try to survive. Any of these characters would honestly be pretty damn useful. But we got big news going on in the raid world. There is a brand new dungeon as well as something called Artifact Ascension. If you battle through the Sand Devil's Necropolis, you can earn oil that will allow you to take your artifacts to the next level. In addition to that, we got a whole bunch of new champions, including one that is actually Ronda Rousey, like the MMA fighter, Ronda Rousey. The best part about this is that this is a legendary champion that you can get for free, whether you're a new player or a long time player. All you have to do is log into raid and play for seven days between now and February 20th. If you do so, Ronda is yours. That's it. That's all there is to it. You get her. But to celebrate her arrival in Raid, you can now use the special promo code RAIDRONDA, which is available again for all users, new and old, in order to get a bunch of helpful stuff. Also, since I know that everyone is probably already using it, considering that it is literally the holiday season, if you are an Amazon Prime member, then that means that you are going to get special Raid bonuses now. And if you have somehow not already started playing Raid, considering the number of ads that I have done, then please click the link down in my description below or scan the QR code that you can see up here on screen and you can get rewards up to $30. We're talking about a free epic champion, Rector Drath, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, an experience boost, as well as an ancient shard so that you can summon more awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. And all of this treasure will be waiting for you here, available for the next 30 days for new players only. But thank you, Raid Shadow Legends, for sponsoring this video. Everyone click that link, scan that QR code, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the video. Yeah, among all the Baltic Nations that were released back with no step back, I actually haven't done any of these for a proper playthrough. And of course, I started making videos like four months or so after no step back came out. So I kind of missed the window of opportunity when this was a really big thing that people were playing. But among all the Baltic countries that were given a focus tree, Lithuania, from what I can recall, at least seeing through playthroughs, is apparently the most powerful one as it can get stupidly, stupidly broken. So without further ado, let's jump into it and see what we're dealing with here. We have literally no equipment to start with. That is a wonderful thing to immediately see. Yes, do we have an industry to support it? No, no, we do not. But that is something we're gonna have to work on here. So let's see, let's get some military equipment immediately going underway. That's all gonna be pretty important, I think. Now at the start of things in 1936, the Baltic and really the whole region over here in general is a little bit uncertain. Considering the events of the previous 20 years that after all the Baltic states got their independence from the Russian Empire, when everything was kind of breaking apart, each nation was trying to figure out its own kind of path. It was trying to figure out what it was really going to do in this world. So the idea of the Lithuanian Republic is very new, and we don't like new ideas. I think we like the old. So first things first, it's time to reconvene the Samos. Let's determine what we're going to do with politics, because every single state has always started with a nice, calm political discussion. Don't question it. Research-wise, we got to get the classic things going. Really anything we can do to help get our production going because we are uh, definitely hurting here. We have some pretty bad effects. Because our entire population seems to be composed of a mixture of poor people, farmers, and furries. I guess it's time to make an empire then. Of course, with all the conquering that we're going to do, it's time to get some military factories immediately underway. We don't really have the industry to support building any civilian factories, so there's really no point in doing so right now. Besides, why build when we can conquer? Now we just kind of make a beeline here through our focus tree and finish this as quickly as we possibly can before the world can burn around us even more than it already typically does. All right, there's the Samos that is done. Atanas, your position is secure as well as your amazing facial hair. I can tell you that you're only going to lose one of those things. Immediate next step is Lithuanian preservationism. It's going to have a pretty powerful effect of getting rid of all of the support for democracy, communism, and fascism, and just pumping up on a light. Not because it gives a big boost, but because it reduces everything else, as well as a massive boost to stability, which we, in the Baltic, really need. That's a common thing throughout history, I'll be honest. 
And we're also not going to spend any political power because this is going to give us a good bonus here for political advisor as well as economy cost reductions. So we're actually going to wait before we go over here to partial mobilization, because even though we could spend it right now, we will save a good like 30 political power if we just wait a little bit of time. And with what we are going to need later, as much political power as we can accumulate is going to be necessary. All right, there we go. There's 100 political more power. We've preserved the will of the people. And now it is time to exile Vold... Vold... I'm going to call you Voldemort. I understand that it's Voldemort, but I cannot look at this immediately, see this face, and say, that is definitely not Voldemort. You are Voldemort now. Time to banish you to the Forbidden Forest, I guess. But with this big surplus of political power, next up immediately after, time to go over here to partial mobilization immediately. And also, we are almost to the level that we want to get a Chief of Army, but we are instead going to improve our worker conditions first, get a little bit more stability in there. Basic machine tools, next up after that, we're going to go concentrated industry. We are really not going to switch through a bunch of different things. So the best bet is to accumulate as much power as we possibly can in the limited factories that we have. At least that's what I believe. There's 100 more political power. Next up after that, we're going to go ahead and get this army defense expert, something to get some ticking army experience as well as some bonus defense for our troops, which is good because they still don't have any people in there. So the individuals that are there need to be a little bit stronger. Oh no, the furries are getting more angry. How will we ever stop them? I don't know. Immediately rooting out the Iron Wolf and just getting rid of that. Yeah, I think that every government should probably push out the furries to the fringes of society just to ensure stability. That that seems like a very decent focus tree that each one should probably have. Yeah. Speaking of which, you're looking a little too furry in the face, my friend. I think it's time we start focusing on getting rid of you. A king for our people, which is going to give us even more stability and war support. That is, we are, we are really going to actually be a stable Baltic country. You know, who knew that all it took was serious political renangling and kicking out all the furries. But we're going to accumulate this political power for now because there's really not anything that we really need to spend it on just yet. All right, there's the new noble class. Next step, Royal Guards. Perfect. That is going to give us some elite units, which are remarkably more powerful than what we initially start out with. Like this is the standard template that I would absolutely love to work with. It is the solid base. I love how the basic design that you create for pretty much any nation. Yeah, that is the Lithuanian elite. Really showing off our power there now, aren't we? And now we can finally learn how to drive a truck or make trucks or know what a truck is. I don't think our people knew. But with abolishing the presidency, that means we can focus on the next step. We can either claim Livonia or we can start supporting monarchism in Poland. Now, between the two of these, since these are both 70 day focuses, I would say in order to accumulate some more equipment, you're going to start supporting monarchism in Poland first. Because with all this political power that we have claimed, this is something that we're going to be using. The Kingdom of Lithuania. You have a fantastic hat as well, man. The Soldier King. You know, I'm, I'm liking the lack of fur. We, uh, I'm glad we got rid of the furries. You're looking clean, boy. Also, I realize I lack trains. So do I not only not know how to use trucks? I also don't know what a train is. The answer is yes. I don't know what a train is. So we, uh, we, we, we better go figure that out. That, that's kind of probably going to be prudent. We lack pretty much everything. All knowledge. But then again, we are a uh, former leftover state of the Russian Empire. So really, what else can you expect? And now we have support monarchism in Poland. Next step is to go over here and claim Livonia. This is going to give us cores on all Estonian and Latvian states, which is really powerful, as well as the annex war goals against them. And so while we wait for that focus to actually finish, that is going to allow us to start pumping in our monarchist support into Poland. Poland is not, not the most stable state at this time. But then again, in this area, I guess that's all just par for the course. So weak-willed Polish people start listening to my propaganda. We need to get this up to at least 80 before we can move on to the next part of the focus tree, which is to start a civil war in Poland. And that is precisely why we needed to save all that political power. We have both accumulated a decent amount of equipment if we need to actually support anything. But I think that with all this political power, we won't need to get rid of it. And instead, we can just spend it on these different abilities here to increase our monarchy support as we get it. And as this finishes, we wait for it to go, which a day later gives us an option to do it again. You saw that our current claim strength rose by 10. This will raise it to 20. We'll do it again, and then it will unlock other options for us to choose from. And we do that while waiting for this whole thing to finish here. There's another. And with that one done, it will unlock other options. And there we go. Now that we have some basis of support, we can go ahead and start spending all that extra political power and everything else we've been accumulating to get all the other stuff. Thus, no ability to really move on from here. It is time that we start fixing different stuff for our economy, I think. Time to rejoin the railways. Because we will learn about railways before we have the knowledge of what the hell a train is. Or I guess in this case, we're going to figure out what a train is and then have to figure out, oh, we, we, we can't just roll it in the mud like all of our other animals. Now, speaking of putting down some animals, Latvia. 
So what we're going to quickly do is move in here, try to pin as many of their units as we possibly can. And I'm going to see if I can wrap around here and get Riga. Oh boy, these elites are going to start blitzing through these lines. All right, we will go ahead and stop. This is about as good as I think we're going to make it here immediately. And we're instead going to consolidate our position and wrap things up here, I think. Because all of this is going to be cores, that means we're going to get their factories, that means we're going to get their population, we're going to get everything, and we are going to be able to immediately start producing as much of this as we can. Initially, when you start this war, the Latvians are going to have approximately the same amount of troops that you are. But as you can see, we have reduced them down by almost maybe half. Since they are spread out throughout the country, if you can blitz through certain parts and isolate some units, you can destroy those so that you don't have to worry about dealing with them later. Of course, it helps if you have knowledge like knowing what a tank is. And then there is Riga isolated. Fantastic. What we need, they are 94% towards capitulation. If I could just move my troops in here, nice and quick, perhaps. There's rejoin the railways. Can we finish this in time? Just a little bit more time is all that is needed. 100% towards capitulation. There we go. Wait a little bit of time and boom, we took it. Okay. But with that, we go ahead and secure Latvia. Firms an exit. We take all that. Fantastic. We have a little bit more time left. Can we move down here? What do we got? The Kingdom of Poland. Excellent. Because we now have more than 85% support or more than 80% support. Thus, we will see if uh, Poland will accept a little bit of a personal union with us and kind of fix their, uh, I mean, guess everything that's wrong with them. You look so sad. You could, you deserve to be under me, buddy. You look so tired. Take a break. Let me rule your country instead. Still, the reason why we saved up so much political power is because you want to be able to spend that on upping your conscription law as soon as you actually declare war on Latvia, because we already get minus 50% to all of our conscription. Thus, instead of 1.2, you want to be able to increase that as soon as possible in order to actually get your troop number up. Your, uh, your divisions actually fight a lot better when they have men in there to fight them. But with that being done, while we are waiting here on Poland, let's go ahead and go after Estonia because, man, you look really grumpy. You are probably going to be way more grumpy after I do this to you. All right, move these troops in, surround and break the others. Fantastic. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. The more of these troops that we can break and push past, the better. Because there is the Kingdom of Poland. Do they accept? No, they instead go into a civil war, and I guess we'll have to deal with whatever comes after. That's lovely. And let's see if we can just push through at this point and take all of the settlements. And there we go. There goes Estonia. Excellent. We have cores on all of it, so we can go ahead and take it all. And boom, that is done. And there we go. Welcome to the Grand Kingdom of Livonia, which is about to become even more grand because the Kingdom of Poland is about to finish things up over here. And there Poland goes and gets annexed, which now becomes the Kingdom of Poland, which immediately becomes my personal union. Excellent. So as soon as we finish fixing our economy here up a little bit, then we, well, we annex and we fix all of our stability and every issue that we could ever possibly have because nothing ever bad would happen to Poland ever. Definitely not. Not in World War II. I love how we took over two additional countries and we got a grand total now of 5 million population. And that's it. That, that, that's everything. That's everything that we would have had to pull our manpower pool from. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and continue to build up some more stuff here then. We're going to need a lot more military equipment where this came from. And there we go with our industry, quote, modernized. Modern farm equipment, meaning we have less furries working in it, I guess. We now go over here and we restore the Commonwealth. And what was overall a remarkably easy way to go and annex the entirety of Eastern Europe. There we go. There's, um... There's the birth of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, once again looking kind of like a fat chef holding out some kind of entree, which is probably the German Reich served up on a platter for me. Yeah, we went from Lithuania to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth with our great and glorious flag and a great and glorious hat. Simply beautiful. Now, at this point, we're going to have the spare political power and everything else, so we might as well start getting some designers so that we can research what we're going to want faster. Because before we do any kind of conquering, which would be great, we're going to need to kind of fix our military here first, which is a little bit, um, incompetent. A nation and its power, which we actually have the power to do things now, amazingly enough, as no Baltic state ever said ever. But it also gave us a much bigger military industry, so we can start working with what we got. And of course, we're going to keep on buying things from the Germans because we want them to like us. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. An actual Eastern state with some semblance of industry. How lovely. We're going to need to put a lot of focus here into anti-air because we're going to be dealing with the Soviets here pretty soon. So we might as well get all that going. Also tank designers, and we are going to want artillery since that's going to be a big thing that we're going to be focusing on. We do now have a huge surplus of equipment though and a huge surplus of manpower. So we're going to need to start pumping out these units rapidly. The more boomsticks that we make, the utter better that we do. All right, there is the Royal Reform. Let's see here, what else can we get? We are more than likely going to want some anti-air bonuses. So let's go ahead and get those. Also, at the same time, can see I'm an expert uh, because we're definitely not going to have air superiority. I can tell you that much. That's not happening, buddy. That's that's not happening at all. 
But what we can do is get a huge percentage of attack and defense here with the Force Brothers so that we can get additional attack and defense on our core territory. That is probably going to be good, but is there anything else that we can get some priority first? This is going to be getting our claim on Russia. This will be the defense. And this is what we're going to need for our territory. Do we want to do three or do we want to do it in two? Probably three just to get some more units pumped out, I'm guessing. So, you know, what? let's get that industry underway. Develop our natural resources because that that baby that right there, that's all natural. That boy, you know, you absorb Poland, Lithuania, and all of a sudden your Royal Guard, which seems so elite, are not as good as what they built with a random infantry template. Huh. This is probably way more suitable for us. Now, the big question is, what is 1939 going to bring? The answer is more than likely lots and lots and lots of pain. So as we prepare for pain, let's go ahead and um get our brothers ready, if you will. And yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get all that ready here, because we're going to be burning through all of our equipment way faster than I ever actually wanted to. Germany demands memo. Okay, well, uh, we just wait a couple more days if we can get that up here. I don't want the event to time out. When is that going to time out? I can't believe that I forgot that they claim memo. Oh, that was dumb. That was that was actually pretty dumb, guys. That was actually pretty dumb. Not going to lie. So you know what, Germany? No, no, I will not be bullied. No, that won't happen. I will defend my land. I will defend my land and you won't touch it. You can kindly, ever so kindly fuck off. Which means that the Germans are going ahead and declaring war on us, which I figure, I figure that that would happen. All right, I, I did I did figure that that would be certainly something that might occur. So quick, let's go ahead and rush this. Rush this as quick as we can. Before they can move more of their troops over onto the side and can flood the waters, we have to take them out as quickly as we possibly can. Our troops are holding, if ever so barely. Oh, and the Germans go ahead and decide to declare war on Belgium. Well, that is lovely, because you doing that means you're also declaring war on the Allies. It means that your forces are going to be split, and less of you are going to be able to come towards me. Yep, okay, there we go. That is a whole bunch of German divisions trapped on this side. Can we please, please hold the line? If we can just hold the line a little bit more, that's going to allow me to short my forces. There we go. There's Konigsberg completely cut off. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We're starting to lose a little bit of ground here. It's fine. It's fine. We can hold. We can hold. Let's join the allies. I will gladly accept. If we can just hold out here a little bit more, I think that will be okay. I think we'll be okay. All right, just cycle the troops back and forth, back and forth. If we can hold out just a little bit more. Yeah, because there goes the Netherlands. I know that we're going to be in a little bit of a rough position over on this side, but it's okay. We're holding, we're holding, we're holding. There we go. There's the German unit finished. That means we can wrap things up over here. We just need to try and hold and strengthen our line here as much as possible. There we go. There's the entire German army captured. Oh, well, I say the entire one. That's uh, everything out of Konigsberg. The Northern army is crushed. They were not expecting us to actually resist for Memel, so they just took it. We were able to just take it here. Oh, well, there goes Belgium. Are they actually going to be able to knock out the French? I really, really hope they do not knock out the French. If they knock out the French, I will be in a significantly rougher position on my side. All right, all right, all right. We will stop. We will stop. We will stop dealing with this. Uh, maybe I need to be a little bit smarter about it. Maybe I need to attack from a couple different fronts. All right, let's see. Let's see. If instead we concentrated all forces on the small little area, we should outnumber them overall, even though they have very high experience and abilities. Yep, it is. It is risky. That's actually gonna be really hard to break through here. Okay. Okay. We are, we are not able to break through. All right. Let's, let's hold and pray to God. The French can do something, which is probably not happening. Okay. The more that I say that, the more that I realize that's not happening because we are throwing our men's lives away over here. Oh, and now Czechoslovakia gets war declared on it too. Wait, that means the enemy is significantly weaker now. Let's just go. You idiots. Please, for the love of God, hold Paris. Just stay. Don't let the Germans in. Frenchies, if you could last just a little bit longer, I'm begging you, please. Oh, there's an entire section of the German army cut off. Fantastic, fantastic. Keep going, keep going. They have no way to resupply. Please, for the love of God, France, hold out. I'm begging you, please. If you could hold out just a few more months, we could take care of this. Come on. How many have we lost at this point? Okay, uh, 150,000. That's nothing. It's, it's, it's jump change to the Polish. They've lost way worse many times before. M many, many times. They've lost a lot. Poland has lost a lot. So honestly, really nothing new here. We're just freshly sacrificing more Polish people to the times of history. Nope, stop, stop the attacks. Come on, don't, don't push any further. Paris, please, for the love of God, don't fall. I'm begging you, I'm begging you, stop. Oh my God, the French are actually doing this. Please, France, could you focus on defending your own borders first before you try and go after Italy, please? Please, for the love of God, do not let Paris fall. I have taken Berlin. If we can just continue this push, I'm begging you, please, France, don't fall. Come on, buddies. If you could just grind through, knock them out. Please knock them out. This is getting stupid. We have sacrificed half a million men so far. The fall of Paris. No! France! 
Why? Why would you capitulate? No. Okay, shit. All of those German forces are now going to be moving over to my side here. Is that going to be helpful? No, it's going to hurt me. But it's okay because we trapped all these Hungarian units. If we could just wipe these out, if we could take these few little settlements here, then I think that we'll be set. Because we took the capital, all we need to move down and do is take a little bit more, and then I think that we're set. What are they at? They are at 96% capitulation. If we could just knock them out, that'll reduce so much of the fighting force that is on this side. There we go. Okay, that's them wiped. Fantastic. Okay, now please, please reinforce this front line. We have to move all these troops that were holding this line over here to be able to support the front. I'm honestly thinking at this point, maybe I should have just given up memo. I know that we're winning. I know that we are, but I feel like I should have done it just for the sake of not sacrificing literally all of my equipment everywhere. And we've already reached the side with the Netherlands. Is Czechoslovakia doing anything? Well, they actually kind of are. We've, uh... Now, if we could just try to get this done before the Soviets decide to interfere with us, I would greatly appreciate it. There goes the Germans! Also, Czechoslovakia, you own quite a bit here. All right, all right, all right. That took a lot more blood than I would have hoped, but hey, we did it. We did it. Oh, well, there go the Soviets. Okay, yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Now, the big question is, what are they going to do? Are they going to go ahead and declare on me? Are they not going? Yep, there they go. Okay, <laughs> and it's green all along the line. Ah, oh, you know, the end of the League of Nations as though it wasn't already happening already. If you want to just continue to throw yourself against my line, I, I, I will say I'll gladly accept it. Soviet-German trade agreement with what Germany? Honestly, just let them grind out their manpower and equipment. Uh, I've lost close to a million men thanks to the Germans, but uh, the Soviets immediately lost a good amount of casualties in like just a month of sending their troops after me. So uh, yeah, yeah, just just let them continuously try to pound themselves against my front line. It, it's, it's perfectly fine, I think. Here, just let them bleed themselves and their equipment out. In the meantime, we need to focus on trying to knock out the Italians. So let's spawn some units and get them down here. Let's, uh, let's just try to wrap up as many of these mountain divisions up here as we can. Yeah, the more of these that we can take out, the better, I think. We're holding all along this line. It looks like they just failed in another attack over on this side. So you know what? Why don't we just claim Greater Lithuania? Because I think that we deserve it. I think, I think that we deserve it, you know. All right, there goes them wiped out in the south. Soviets are still throwing themselves at my front line. They're down to, like, no equipment, too. Did they burn through all of it already? What are they in terms of losses? Did you... Versus our 19,000 or 20,000 that we've lost against you. You genuinely just threw 400,000 lives away just trying to take this land. How much equipment did you burn through to try and do that? Benito Mussolini is deposed. Excellent, 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 excellent. We can just take the Northern Territory. Bulgaria joins the Axis. Wait, are they? Okay, they're not touching me. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. They're going to fall anyway. Bulgaria, your timing could not have been any worse, to be honest. I've burned through the majority of that manpower that I kind of picked up back there. So that's uh, that's definitely a thing. Also, I realized this entire time I could have gotten a Prince of Terror, which would have more than likely helped me maintain all of my <laughs> occupied territory. But there goes a civil war for the Italians. Are they my puppet? No, they're a puppet of the British. Of course, I, I don't know why I would expect anything else. Probably because they're the leader of the Allies. Ooh, but we are just racing down through the South now. All right, come on, come on, we can do it. We can do that. We're getting a lot more aid over here. We're seeing some French, we're seeing some British, we're seeing some other units that are arising over here and helping us. Oh shit, when did this happen? Oh no, <laughs> son of a bitch, I wasn't paying attention. I was too focused on Italy over here. Okay, fine, they got this in the south. Quick, let's move our troops back up north. We gotta support, we gotta support. Even as the British go and launch invasions, what are you doing, buddy? Oh, the, the British Soviet gangbang. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not going to work out for you. This is my land. I conquered it fair and square from the other guy. Oh, wait, I realize if they just sent all of these Soviet tank divisions over here, that means they have nothing on the border, which means I'm about to wipe out the majority of the Soviet tanks from the looks of it. Ah, uh, I mean, that works for me. Yep, and now Finland rejects the Soviet demands, which means that if the Soviet Union also goes to war with Finland, we're probably going to be able to push them along the side because they're going to have next to no troops, I think. God, you know, it's like when you actually play historical, when you go and play historical, you get to watch and see what happens when the AI makes all the stupid mistakes that you're like, oh, we shouldn't declare war on all these other powers when we already have a three front war going on. Oh, we're going to do it anyway. You got it, Mr. Stalin. Yep, because there goes more Soviet Union troops. You thought that you could take my territory, but no. Oh, wait, and there we go. Yep, the uh, the German Empire falls. Okay, well, fantastic. I guess that means we just, you know, clean up our borders here a little bit. You know, just, just take that little territory I think we deserve. Because we have a good 57% of the war support. Okay. 
Well, we're clearly, clearly just going to need a little bit of territory to make it nice and pretty for us, I would say. And I don't want to actually have to maintain a garrison on the rest of this, so I guess I'll just start puppeting it. Oh, wait, can I not puppet? Is it not letting me puppet? No. I mean, buddy, if you're not going to let me puppet anything, then I'm just going to end up doing this. Oh, well, I guess there you go. It's your own damn fault for not letting me just puppet him. I was just going to puppet him. That's it. You're the one that forced me to be a conqueror, allies, not me. Besides, look at this. You got British Italy. Why could you not let me have Polish Germany? Come on. We're now the Polish-Lithuanian-German Commonwealth. The most cursed thing you could probably imagine. And okay, yes, we might have caused a large amount of world tension. Maybe. What? No. Hold on. Us taking all the territory did not cause any world tension? Are you kidding me? I took everything. I guess the total amount wasn't caused because so many other states got liberated, so it didn't matter. Oh, I was able to just take everything. That's beautiful. Now, if anyone is wondering what it is that I've been using, one of my primary push units has been something that I'm just calling the Winged Hussars, which I know I did the same kind of joke when I played as Poland, but now we're the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth because Lithuania. The idea of it is similar, but I found in testing that there is something that could perhaps be even greater for pushes into mostly densely packed infantry. And that is that you can get some pretty great breakthrough as well as soft attack power if you just load up with armored artillery pieces. Like in this case, I just made something called the SPG-2. It moves just as fast as a cavalry unit, so you didn't have to load nearly as many resources into the engine or the armor or anything else. You still get a bunch of densely packed armor. You have a medium howitzer in here, which actually at this point I realize, can I upgrade? No, I can't upgrade. Once I get the next level of artillery, I will be able to. But while there isn't really any heart attack or piercing associated with this unit, it doesn't need to be. Because the winged Tassars are going to get now get so much stupid soft attack, they don't use nearly as much fuel, and for a place that can't really generate as many tanks, something like this is pretty excellent because it means that you can attach both artillery and armor onto a unit at the same time. I mean, look at this. We got 52 armor. If I went to one of my infantry divisions and I just wanted to load this up here, like let's say I wanted to add, make this a 21 width, okay? Instead of adding artillery, like motorized or anything else, I could go over here and add artillery, and lo and behold, this one thing is going to not only drastically boost the soft attack, but it's simultaneously going to make it so that all of my troops are armored. This idea is significantly better for general pushes because it means that you'll actually be able to stack significant amount of soft power or soft attack onto a unit. I just don't have the industry to actually add it to all of my units, otherwise I definitely would have. Instead, I've had to add it to these uh, cavalry divisions for pushes. I wonder if I could actually break through here. I actually can. I can break through some of these territories. There we go. There's a whole bunch of more units trapped. Fantastic. I think that we're going to be able to start doing this and push all along the Soviet line. At least pretty soon. I may not have the equipment for all of it yet for the, uh, the soldiers, rather. But there we go. That is a whole bunch of Soviet units now that are wiped out here in the south. Excellent, excellent, excellent. They're at 668,000 losses. It's barely been any time whatsoever. This is just astronomically easier to do. Oh, hey, Ford, you want to go ahead and invest in our country? I guarantee there's going to be open space for your trucks to roam. Here we go. Come on. Trap some more in. Trap some more in. There we go. There's some good ones trapped. I'm pretty sure that at this point, they literally don't have the equipment to be able to do much else. Oh, yeah. Even as they throw more men at me here all along the line. <laughs> Never mind. They are still going to try things because it's the Soviet tactic to throw your men's lives away. Yep. Even as we trap more units all along the line. That is just beautiful. That is beautiful. Ah, uh, what's, you know, 15 more divisions of infantry caught in the span of like two weeks? Nah, it's it's nothing. So before we wait to actually give a big push, since we don't really have the numbers to be able to take on anything, we're just going to focus on wiping out as many individual units of troops as we can. The more of that that we can do, the better, because the Soviets quite literally do not have the infantry equipment to be able to pump things out. Like, you can see how low they are. They definitely have manpower. That's equipment. So we'll just wipe out all these significantly weaker units and just keep on doing these little pushes. The more of these that we can wrap in here, the better. Oh, whoa, is that more Soviet units trapped? Yeah, yeah, it is. The AI is not even responding at this point, so we can just kind of blitz through all of this. Oh, what was that? Another uh, about 200, 300,000 men? Yeah, yeah, that happens. Oh, is that five more divisions trapped? Yeah, yeah, it is. We're going to wipe those out now, too. Oh, and there's keep taken. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. Just going to go ahead and finish everything off here then, I guess. We're not even going to try and push through in the winter. All we're going to do is progressively just push and wipe out little points of units, and simultaneously we are going to seize as many of the supply points in here as we can. If we take everything along the coast, or not the coast, along the front line, then this means that once we do actually push, the troops on the opposing side are going to be so out of supply once we go in the spring 
they're just going to collapse like butter. And now that the troops forced to be on the front line, this means that they're going to take heavy attrition and they're just going to bleed out through their equipment. Wait a minute. When the hell did I lose all of my steel? Where did my steel go? Oh, oh, I'm exporting the majority of it because now I'm on free trade. I kind of forgot about that. Well, luckily we can just change this right back down and hey, lo and behold, we're in a significantly better position. There we go. Yugoslavia has joined the Chinese front. Why? Why? And Romania, why would you see to the Soviet Union? I'm literally right here. Well, there we go. We got improved artillery. So as soon as you get this 1941, what I found is that you can then go, go to that artillery that we had, that uh, armored one, create a variant of it. Uh, let's go ahead and replace that with our improved medium howitzer. And oh, lo and behold, it gets better piercing. It is a little bit slower. So it's going to be able to take on a little bit more tanks, but it's going to have way more soft attack. So we go ahead and get that one. Probably slap on another thing for the engine just so that we can make sure it has some more speed. And we're going to have the SBG Mark 1. And we're going to convert that. And we're going to set this over here so that we can start converting all those tanks that we have. Are they not going to move anything? Are they, do they know it's a death trap? Do they know it's a death trap and so they're not going to do anything? Ah, oh, that's so tragic. That's so sad. Why would you not go and attack me there, buddies? I totally wasn't going to kill you there. Absolutely not. It's okay. It's okay. We're just going to wipe out other units here. It's fine. Oh, hey, lo and behold, France is invading through the north. That's funny to see. Huh, you know, if they have to send all their forces down here. You know, it's funny. If they have to send all their forces down here to protect the south, you know what would be really tragic? We have all these additional units that if we just go over here and maybe spawn them in, instead of first attaching them to the front line, why don't we go ahead and send them over here? Because the Soviets, I don't think, are in really any much of a position to resist us anymore. So if I can make a bit of a spearhead push and go and attack this region here towards Mikulov, and that means that we can trap the entire Soviet Southern Army. Excellent. And yep, there's the entire Soviet Southern Army wiped. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, uh, United Kingdom, you're pushing in through the north? Well, I guess that means that I'm going to also do so. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Can we trap the entire Northern Army now? Can we trap that one? That would be an excellent little thing to go ahead and get if we could. Oh, did I do that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's the entire Northern Army trapped. How tragic, how tragic. Soviets... Did you not expect it? Did you not expect it considering what we've been doing? Like, yeah, this whole thing is very micro-intensive once you actually have to do it. Yeah, it is. But, but what ends up happening then is that you're able to just crush the entire Soviet force without worrying about wasting all of your equipment. And it's much, much, much smarter to do with like push units of artillery pieces as well as armor than to just throw your infantry at the front line and hope that you actually kill something. Because lo and behold, that was half a million men that wiped out a good 30 divisions or so with the Soviets. And with that, we have, uh, we wiped out Leningrad. And if April showers bring May flowers, what does the May flower bring? Lots and lots of bloodshed. Yep, that's a lot of green. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of let this last little bit go here. Let my allies take the southern front here with Crimea. I don't really care about it. We, uh, we're instead gonna focus on doing our own little pushes here because we are kind of gonna rack up the casualties on both sides, I think. Oh, is that the entire Soviet army in here trapped? Oh, that's awful. That's awful. Whatever is going, whatever are you gonna do? And now quick, blitz through the north. Oh, there's a whole other group trapped. All right, all right, let's go. Let's keep on going. Where'd that wipe them down to? They only have like 96 divisions. We outnumber them. Go, my brothers, go. Take your rightful Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth land. Like all those years ago, we have uh, managed to sack Moscow once again. And like that, there's another pocket. All right, all right. How's things going down here in the south? We are, we are kind of blitzing through the entire thing here. Yep, there is uh, the Southern Army caught again. Greece declared war on Albania. So Albania joins the common turn. Okay. Yep. That, that seems to make total sense in this world. All I'm saying is if the, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth can come back, then so too can Greece do some conquering. Oh, wow. The front is now wide open because how many units have they lost? They've lost even more. How tragic. I totally did not expect that to happen after crushing and surrounding all of their troops. Yep. I think we can just kind of let this go here for now, I guess. Uh... Add another offensive line because I know we're gonna have to fight past the Urals at this point. So yeah, yeah, I'll just let it go. This is, um, this is a rather terrifying thought to see. Oh, and now Romania is our ally. Hey, that's nice. Good to know that you didn't get absolutely screwed in this game. Oh, is that more Soviets trapped? It is, it is. Just kind of run on five speed and blitz on through. 
Of course, there's a reason why we're going to be able to do that. Our winged SARS are ridiculous now. That much soft attack concentrated with this much breakthrough on a unit like this, it's not very expensive. Like, yeah, it used 250 tanks for each one, but really in the grand scheme of things, if that's the only one that you're producing, it's not bad. Yeah, that, uh, that's not going to last much longer considering that they only have 57 troops in the entire Soviet Union. I think manpower has now actually become an issue for you, buddy. And there we go. Yeah, they, they had a grand total of like 3,000 guns left. They weren't able to produce anything. We just completely wiped them out. And with that, I think that's all the states, though. Uh, I could do something just to really fuck with the allies. What if I just, um, what if I just used my overwhelming uh, point value here to just kind of take what I want here? Oh no, did Greece start this war and me have no reasonable connection to why I could get Albania and did I just take it from you? Yes, yes I did, which immediately caused you to kick me from the faction. <laughs> well everyone, there you go. Well everyone, there you go. It is the end of 1941. We uh, we managed to basically conquer everything and that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. That's one of the most overpowered little countries that you could possibly play because it's very easy to break the system. Now that all being said, here at the end of the video, I will go ahead and say that I actually had to do this run like three or four times because something kept on happening as I was doing well, and that is that the Soviets would randomly decide to justify at will, it seems. I, I think I had to do it like three times. I think this was my third attempt at really trying to get Germany to capitulate before the Soviets could justify on me because they could do it at the start of 1939 or they could do it at like the beginning of 1940. You have a year to really get it done, it seems, that is like that window before they're going to absolutely uh, justify and declare on you. That was a pain in the ass to deal with. But my friends, that is the end. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you have a good rest of your day. Please let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should do next. As always, I do read through the comments to see your suggestions, and I thank you for everything that you put. Goodbye, guys. Have a good rest of your day.